All right, YouTube. Today we are going to cover Summoners or Chronicles wealth cycle. So we're going to talk about gold. We're going to talk about uh, Rahilds, which is the exchange center currency. And we're going to talk about gems. All right, and we're going to talk about how these three types of currency in the game kind of intersect with with each other and uh, come together to create a uh, nice amount of how do I say this, like, monetary advancement, I guess, <laughs> I don't know, uh, but basically let's cover the basics first, um, gold is used for things such as, like, purchasing farming tools, uh, like, you know, tools you'll use for, like, going out and gathering and mining, it's used for upgrading your character, so your summoner, it's used for upgrading your monsters as well, uh, both for like things like awakening and uh, what is it? Evolving, I think. I don't think it's used for leveling, but it's used for like uh, skill ups as well and uh, things of that nature, right? So, gold, very important for advancing your uh, just level, your power level in general. Um, Rahilds are used for the exchange center. Oh, gold is also used for like buying mounts and stuff. Like gold, gold is like your general purpose kind of use everywhere kind of thing for the most part, right? Uh, Rahilds are your exchange center currency, which you get for selling uh, various things on the exchange center. So we will have a quick peek at that, right? So here's the exchange center and uh, buy, sell, etc. Right? So you can you know buy and sell items. Like there's even like uh, raid level weaponry here. Materials, potions, food, right? So all kinds of things on the exchange center. So this is basically your auction house. And um, gems are of course able to be used for purchasing for hilds and for gold. Whereas if we go to the shop, uh, we go to say currency here, uh, you'll see that you can actually use gems to buy gold. Gems can also be used for summoning. Uh, there are some other things here. Oh. These first, these uh, purchases of gold, the first time you purchase something, you get double the amount, right? So you got uh, quite a few millions lined up in here, right? Uh, for your first time purchase. And if you'd like to keep purchasing things with gems later, you can do that as well. Um, we go to, where is it? So in the shop here, there are like various things. So like this pack of growth ticket package, for example, this dungeon pack, you can see I've purchased it. It's like 500 gems. Get like 12 uh, dungeon entry tickets, which is it's all right, you know, it's not too bad. I needed the extra, and uh, yeah. So we're going to talk about a little bit more about these, all right, and how to acquire uh, such currencies and how kind of all three of these currencies uh, can be used for each other. So this one here also costs gems. The bag space, for example, trans scroll that we purchased uh, earlier in the account uh, also with gems uh, this is given for free basically sometimes things pop up in here they cost gems you can buy it with gems all right you got these consumables i'd recommend not really using gems on buying these but uh yeah anyways for those of you who watched my last video you may recall that i had very little gold left uh very little rahilds left and very little gems left, right? So if I get out of this combat, this auto combat going on here, you can see I've got, I'm now at like 331,000 gold. I've got 1,600 gems. And from last night, uh, I actually only had about 26,000 gold left. So like sometime early this morning. And so within that time, I have gathered this back up uh, just after the rollover and stuff. And uh, what we're going to do is I think we should talk about the exchange center first because uh, that's going to be pretty quick and then we'll uh, you know, talk about the gems, right? A little bit more because we've kind of already covered those two a little bit so let's go to... One second, <laughs> get rid of this guy. I don't know why I'm getting spawned on here. We just need to be out of combat so we can teleport later. Can you not? Okay, thank you. Huh. Now, we're going to talk about like the methods to acquire all three in pretty some ways and I figure we should start with the exchange center and uh, gems themselves because this is gonna be a good opener we're gonna I'm gonna try and do it in real time and show you uh, a great way to get gems is also through the exchange center okay now as you can see here uh, the Rahilds 
can be purchased and sold right now you can only buy these particular rahilds using uh like cash purchased real like real cash purchased gems can't uh use these uh locked gems which i guess we'll call them our free-to-play gems for purchasing rahilds on the auction house unless i think it's from someone who is then selling rahilds uh, through the auction house I'd have to double check, I can't remember. But uh, essentially, uh, you can buy and sell gems through here. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do you get rehealed? You can see I'm currently sitting at 174,000 rehealed. Uh, for those of you who watched the last video, I did not have that many. <laughs> um, I, meant, I did mention that I was waiting for my items to sell. And you see here, I have some items up at the moment. You can see that they are listed for various prices, a whole bunch of them. You can see a couple of them have sold. Uh, so like the Korean bullhead here have sold six out of six. I now have a total of 4,140 from that. Okay, so we're gonna collect those. Uh, it does take a bit of a tax, right, when you collect it, but that's fine, right? That's fine. Uh, you'll see this cobalt mineral sitting here, 124,000 if all of it sells, right? We have sold seven out of 10 of the stacks that we've listed, okay? Uh, you can see mangoes, 6 out of 10. The largemouth base, or bass, we've sold 1 out of 2, right? So, I am going to collect, uh, when, these, when this sale ends, if the rest of it hasn't sold yet, you see it's got like 5 hours left, give or take. Uh, I'm going to collect the 7 that have sold worth of Rahilds, right? And the other 3 can be relisted if I like, okay? Well, whatever the new price i'm sure someone's undercut me and that's why the other three haven't sold yet uh but yeah so like you know i can just relist it right you see five out of ten for the minnows so i'm gonna get like about half of what you're seeing here for the final number and uh yeah that's how i get my rehills you'll see these branches are fully sold i've gotten 31,950. right so uh the exchange center here takes a cut or the auction house exchange center right and you know bob's your uncle right so this is how you get rehealds, uh, by selling various knickknacks that people probably want. Uh, a great way to pick what is going to sell well is to say, for example, uh, right now it's pretty early. You got people, everyone trying to level their professions. So things that level professions, like the branches, for example, like the cobalt ore, uh, sapphire ore should sell pretty well once people kind of catch up to the later progression of, um, professions and stuff right you can sell these particular things uh that people are using to upgrade their professions or to craft things with and make a pretty you know a pretty penny for it at the moment right but like i said like cobalt mineral um fluorite ore uh branches what else we'll, we'll go through like so like the harder to acquire things right uh, so like for example cobalt ore you have to mine gold or silver ore in order to get cobalt ore and you get like, for example, I think I it was like a thousand tinks of the node for cobalt ore, right? Uh, to to get like, so I had like a thousand odd silver ore in order to have like fifty to seventy cobalt ore. I think was the kind of <laughs> the the amount that I had to farm in order to get some, you know, fifty to seventy cobalt ore. And it was not pretty, right? It's not. It's not fun to farm that much in order to get. So it is difficult to acquire manually. However, there is an alternative to that, and we will, and that would be the uh, Lizardman Exploration. And uh, we'll get back to that in a few minutes. So right now, what we're going to do is list an item for sale. Um, let's actually, so let's jump straight to gems. So someone has just listed these 10 for 140. Let's have a little peek. All right, so I can only purchase these with real money as well. So this is... These, these are um, for hills that someone has listed for 140. There's uh, 10, and I cannot purchase them with my free to play gems. So there you go. You can't use your free to play gems to buy them at all. However, you can sell for hills. So I'm going to sell 100,000 worth. I can only sell in a 10 stack. I'm going to go 140 as well, just like them. And we will get 1400 gems out of it. Okay? And people will buy this because it means they don't have to buy the 150 gems right so it is cheaper to buy the 140 than it is the 150 you're barely undercutting it uh someone's listed these but this should sell pretty quickly so we'll see if it sells by the end of the video 
Uh, and you'll see if I go down to items listed, uh, items listed for sale, you can only uh, list 20 items at a time, right? So you'll see if I uh, scroll down here, uh, the Rahilds are now listed here, at, you know, 19 out of 20. Uh, so I can sell one more item on the exchange center here. I'll just pick whatever. Um, let's see, doesn't really matter for me. That's already listed. I'm just trying to sell something I have a bunch of. Doesn't need to be expensive for me. So like fluorite minerals should sell pretty well later on. You need a lot of that for the later professions, for example. Uh, let's see, mirror cup. Let's just sell some mirror cup. I just, you know, I try to, I try to just have uh, things that I'm, I'm personally not using anymore. And uh, if I have excess of it, I'll just put that on the exchange center auction house right away. Right. Now uh, let's jump over to the actually before we leave this area. I believe there was a chest over here. So this is one of the methods for getting gold is that you can, this is like if you want to actively farm, now someone's probably actually taken it. You can farm chests in the open world, right? So you'll, you'll come across chests that'll drop items and it'll drop gold. Uh, what you might not also be aware of is that you can also farm. Hmm. Hang on, let's, we need to, uh, before you teleport off, let's try this area. There are like vases or whatever that are usually found. So yeah, here we are. So see these glowing vases? You can also get gold and blue keys. So see 705 gold out of that? Well, on it, so like 305 gold. Uh, and then right here as well, you see a whole bunch of gold there, right? It says like almost a thousand gold in drop. Plus I got the key. And if we go to um, here, you can see that I can use these keys that drop to open this chest, right? So this is before we jump back onto the Rahilas. I'm just showing you guys this now while we're here uh, as one of the gold acquiring methods. I don't see any more here, but yeah, you can just teleport around and have a look and see if the bases have respawned. Um, <clears throat> they're not always there. It's like one open world uh, spawn, per, like not per person, but like, um, what was I trying to say here? Other people can grab it and then it goes on like a cooldown period, right? So that's just one method of gold acquirement that I'm just saying right now. Uh, we are going to come back to gold itself very soon. But uh, yeah, let's head over to the exploration squad and continue with the exchange center talk, right? <coughs> we'll just do that first. Excuse me. Which is going to tie back into gold, as you'll see soon, shortly, right? So, you know, you might be thinking, oh, well, how do we turn this into gold, right? Because the Rahilds, I have a lot of Rahilds. Uh, I can't just buy gold with it, and I can't buy gems with it, right? So, oh, sorry, I got, <laughs> can't, yeah, so you can't buy gems with it, and you can't, um, you know, can't buy gems with it, you can sell it for gems. Uh, someone else is, someone else is footing the cost for you, right? Now, if we come to Lizardman Exploration, you'll see that some of these really hard to acquire items, like branches, uh, so, Cobalt Mineral, uh, Eternal Leaf sell pretty well. Um, Kiwi is going to be used in one of the later professions later. Uh, sorry, in like cooking later for some really good cooking food. That should sell, excuse me, that should sell pretty well. Uh, sturdy Tree Trunks are a maybe. I don't really, I don't know. I haven't try, actually tried to sell them too much. But for the most part, these things that you have to farm. So like in order to get branches, you have to farm mango. You have to farm peaches, right? So you do get a healthy supply of branches just by farming those, but it takes time. Uh, the four leaf clover, on the other hand, it like so for branches, like maybe every couple of node ticks, you'll get branches. For the four leaf clover, you might be looking at 10 node ticks, maybe 20 node ticks before a four leaf clover drops for you, right? So four leaf clover uh, has a better chance of uh, probably selling really well because it is used in various things, such as I think you use four leaf clover for. Um, like crafting the, uh, the wool or something that we use for like crafting outfits, for example. People really like the outfits. Uh, branches are used in pretty much everything for, for like alchemy and processing, etc. Um, so really important, even if they are easy to get, the more the merrier. So they should always sell pretty well, uh, unless obviously the market gets flooded. Cobalt ore, uh, again, silver ore, gold ore, really annoying to farm normally. Uh, whoops. Ooh, 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 one sec. Okay, back in here. Uh, Eternal Leafs are great. Uh, they do sell pretty well. Let's see, what do we got here? The Fluorite Ore. 
not so much sells super well at the moment, but should do later on. Uh, fluorite ore is just like cobalt ore. I think you have to farm, I think it was mithril and something else. But you, you can check these things. And uh, obsidian mineral should be the late game one. Uh, pretty rough to get. I think you farm adamantium to try and get obsidian, like adamantium and platinum, I think, for obsidian. Oh, hang on. So mithril and gold for fluorite. Uh, iron and silver for cobalt. Sorry. My bad. I was infusing iron with uh, gold there. But yeah, anyways, if you have a look at how much I got for the exploration. Oh, uh, my bag or rune story just for. Oh, apparently they've got a uh, rune shortage. So uh, let's get back onto another method of getting gold while I have to, while I do this. Uh, let's jump over to the general merchant quickly. So we covered uh, open world, running around, if you want to be active you can run around and uh, do the open world with chests and stuff, right? You know, you can farm the bases, you can farm the chests. Uh, let's just cover runes quickly, since I need to clear some space apparently. Uh, you'll see I've got some plus 12s here, I'm pretty much done with these runes. So uh, if you don't want to disassemble them in order for rune parts, you can then, uh, so for example, I've filtered these runes, so 5 star up to rares, so all my heroic runes are safe. <clears throat> and then I just select it all, and you'll see I get 11,200 gold out of this, right? So easy peasy, boom, my gold just went up, right? Uh, while we're here, you can see that item in my inventory. So uh, gear as well will get you gold, right? So disassemble, disassemble, there's a thousand gold right there as well as these enhancement shards. So that's that's just a couple quick, uh, you know, another couple quick ones for gold while we're in the middle of explaining uh, Rahil's, all right? <laughs> and what we're gonna do here is complete the exploration. You can see I got a couple four leaf clovers, I got some branches and other general stuff that does sell pretty well. And uh, once again, you get a bunch of cobalt ore. Now, in order to get this Lizardman exploration out again, I need to spend a little bit of gold, okay? And this is where the cycle is really ha happening right now, right? So we come back to the general merchant, we need tools, and for the um, exploration lizard man, we need these uh, M rarity. We need nine of them for the one, for the, for the level that I'm farming at the moment, right? And nine again, so we're spending we're spending roughly like thirty-two thousand odd gold for that. Now, if you want to manually farm in the open world for various uh, products to put on the exchange and the auction house, the lucky harvest gloves and the lucky pickaxe, expensive, yes. So, like you'll see, for a hundred of them, it's like a million gold. However, you will get your money's worth out of them. Uh, these are much better than buying the pickaxe and premium pickaxe uh, as far as I'm concerned because A you can farm quicker and B you get a hundred durability instead of 40 uh, For like just a little bit over double the cost you get more than double the durability, okay? And I think it has a higher chance So it's like it said the, that it has a cape that it is capable of mining hidden rocks like I feel like it it, it I feel like in my time period, it kind of, it definitely felt like I was getting more of the uh, the other like the bonus minerals. So like uh, when I was farming silver ore, I felt like I was getting more cobalt ore. I don't know if that's one hundred percent accurate, but it definitely felt like I was getting more uh, during my time like mining silver ore. It felt like I was getting more cobalt ore, for example. But uh, I'm not sure on that. I don't know what the mechanics behind the system is, so don't quote me on that. Just saying it felt like it to me. Okay. <laughs> As you can see here, there's also like ingredients uh, that you use for cooking that you need gold for, right? And then we come back over here once we've acquired our tools. And uh, I'm gonna go, I've got like 700 branches. Let's go for some four leaf clover. Now you do need monsters with battle power, which again, you need gold for that because you use gold for upgrading the runes. You use gold for, um, again, upgrading the awakening and the evolution, right? So right here I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, difficulty three. It's gonna take six hours to come back. And we're gonna get supposedly 27 four leaf clovers, right? And that, it, when you're doing that every six hours or so, it adds up pretty quickly, all right? Like it, it does add up pretty quickly. I'm gonna do obsidian again for my water. You, you can see that, um, you know, 27 obsidian. 
Now that's not quite sellable uh, too often yet on the exchange, but I'm just gathering it because I'm upgrading my professions and stuff, right? So you can see here, uh, the, there are just a lot of options for you and they, they are, um, you will need different elemental monsters in order to farm each region and stuff. So like, you might want to be farming both of these uh, wind regions, for example, for the fluorite and the four-leaf clovers or branches. <clears throat> or you may want to, uh, you know, the cobalt, right? It just depends on if you're out for like advancing and upgrading your own professions here. So if we jump over into uh, my professions, you'll see I do have them all maxed. Uh, I probably should have shown this at the start. <laughs> um, but for those of you who are still here, alchemy, very expensive. Millions of gold, uh, tons of materials acquired, etc, etc. Uh, a great example here are these premium handwork craft tools. So if, let's head over there and have a look at the recipe. You can see we need uh, some emerald. Very easy to farm. This, this string, not too bad to farm either. The normal lumber, <clears throat> branches. Lots and lots of branches, as well as the sturdy tree trunks. Only one tree trunk, but three branches. You'll have plenty of tree trunks to spare normally. The branches, not so much. You will need a lot of branches, especially when you're supposed to craft 15 of these, right? A lot of branches. So, that just an example of why they are so popular. Now, uh, it seems we have sold something on the exchange center, so let's have a look. And items are listed. We have sold our Rahils. I just made 1400 gems during this video. And you see, oh, well, I guess 1260. But you see the point, right? And I have another 100,000 Rahils here. I can sell those to uh, get more gems. And, you know, again, Bob's your uncle. And now I can just relist something 19 out of 20. Easy money, right? So, again, try and focus on things that are going to be popular for the professions. Uh, have a peek through the professions, such as like processing. Uh, blacksmithing even right so there are some like extra materials that like you know this silver ingots and stuff the the lumber stuff lumber is should sell really well i haven't actually uh, tried selling any but it should sell pretty well it just depends right just it's going to depend specifically on your server your market etc anyways i think we've talked about rehilds enough for now i think you probably get the idea here and you've seen how quickly we can get gems out of it right it's just a matter of waiting for your items to sell and hoping that you've picked a good item uh, but again a good item will generally just be something that is uh, used for upgrading your professions and stuff at the moment uh, later on you might be able to like for example I have high hopes for the like master rank food the level 7 food that I can now craft so like attack plus 295 I feel like uh, teams that want to speed clear dungeons and stuff will probably be into this um, and yeah so we'll let's move on from that okay we won't get too much into like how to upgrade all that and all that kind of jazz because that'd be for like another video this one's going pretty long already um <clears throat> now methods of uh acquiring gold actually no sorry back to gems quickly before we uh get into it so we, let's go back to the shop so now we, we've acquired our gems we can then come into the shop uh, come down here if we want more gold or if we're short on gold we can then use the gems to buy gold if we want we can use those gems for summoning so if I go into the summon altar uh, oh actually I can't really show you this because I've got a bunch of mystic scrolls but I'm sure you're all aware you can use gems for summoning personally I actually recommend just don't use your gems for gold or for the transcendent scroll uh, for any other number of thing um refreshing that's what we want to cover gems and refreshing okay so that's what i was uh, almost forgetting to cover so what i kind of do each day right so number one i like to use uh gems for refreshing uh, arena once right to get some more you can see i've already refreshed it once because the first recharge is 50 gems and uh that gives me some like an extra 10 of uh the arena entries right and butter being butter boom I get a nice little win, I get some arena coin, some arena currency, right? And what's important about the arena currency, so I've used 50 gems to get an extra 10, so it's like 10 times 14-ish or so uh, worth of currency. You go to the arena shop, the arena shop has uh, devil mons, it has uh, rainbow mons, etc. You know, you've got this 
Royal Magician, Tech Board, etc. Right, so I, I refresh once a day. You've got some Breath of Life here if you want. It looks like it's unlimited. And uh, yeah, you know, that gets me my Devil Mons each week. It gets me uh, closer to buying this stuff and so on and so forth, right? So one use of gems is to get yourself more currency there. Another use of gems, which I like to do each day. So we go to quests, we go to repeat quests. Um, you can refresh this for 150 gems a day. Okay, and that'll get you some more dungeon entries. Okay, and this is again leading up to gold. So we get gold from dungeons if we want. We get gear from dungeons, we get runes from dungeons. I like to farm the calming, the disturbance thing, and then I can use my dungeon entries for whatever. Now, obviously, you can also use your repeat quests for the 16,000 gold here and a couple unknown scrolls. I don't recommend that. Same with um, this, like this state of pioneering. <clears throat> it is a little cheaper in the Rahilds, but. There's not as much uh, diversity for what you can use versus, like, for what you can farm versus the growth ticket, because you can get both the uh, transcendence piece, the chaos piece, and the harmony piece, depending on which type of dungeon you're farming, as well as XP if you want, like, as well as gold, right? So it's a little less, it's like maybe a couple thousand less gold per clear. Uh, but it, I feel like I just, like, again, path of growth tickets. Uh, other ones to go for in the end all right in my opinion now uh let's see with the path of growth tickets the repeat quests you can then uh, obviously come into path of growth path of training is for focusing on gold and also give you a bunch of xp potions right uh additional entries again i think it was 50 gems for the first recharge and then i think it's like 100 gems for another recharge you get three extra entries so you're spending i guess 150 gems to get another six uh entries when you recharge specifically on this page right so without using these uh growth tickets you, you click on this use crystals there's another uh, thing for using gems on and you'll get like another six entries for it, it's like three entries for 50 gems and then another three entries for 100 gems so Maybe not worth doing it twice if you don't want to. I feel like the the 50 gems is a maybe. I, I don't know why it only recharges three entries. I feel like it should be the whole six, but you know, that's what Comdos decided and so that's what we're working with, right? This depends on how desperate you are for gold, for runes, uh, for the material drops here. Now you can see a little bit of gold drops here and of course as we sh showed earlier you can still you can farm uh sorry you can sell your runes to the general merchant if you need that extra gold the rarity of the runes is going to change uh how much it sells for uh, and obviously of course subjugation again you get the gear and as we showed earlier you can disassemble the gear to also get gold and when you disassemble the gear you will also get um these uh these these stones here these durability restoration stones all right so just something to take note of you'll probably want plenty of those uh later on now um i think we've covered pretty so you know using gems for like actually buying gold in the store and using gems for refreshing things each day uh you'll also get plenty of gems from your daily and weekly so you'll get like uh where is it with doing three repeat quests you'll get 300 crystals every single day and the weekly uh, challenge also gets you, where is it? I think I've actually already finished it. So there's like 300, uh, sorry, 600 gems for the doing 12 weekly, uh, 12 repeat quests per week, right? Uh, the Another place is in Arena. You'll also get gems each week based on your current rank. So let's see, history reward. What do we go here? I haven't been doing the best, but we're, we're doing all right. Uh, so weekly reward here. Where are we? Now, I think I finished, what is it, Master 1. The so last week I got 600 gems on the refresh. I got 600 gems. Right now, if it finished right now, it has only just started this week's PvP, so 500 gems. Uh, hopefully I'll be like Master 2 or 3 or whatever by the end of this week instead though. Okay, so just try to remember that. Um, now, tomorrow's update is bringing uh, the Battlefield as well as the Brawl Arena. So I imagine we'll get more gems from that as well. We'll have to see how it goes. That'll be like a separate video. I wanted to get this video out before that one drops. Now, as for other uh, methods of acquiring gold itself, right? Let's see. Um, 
if we come into professions, for example, right? So another reason people might um, be buying things from the exchange. If you come to processing, these uh, items here, these shiny dice, these luxuries, excuse me, the ruby uh, brooch, so on and so forth. So this whole line of things here, right? The, uh, let's see, chess piece, is it called? Uh, the shiny feather, the uh, colorful sea dragon, the flame peacock, these all sell for gold, the fancy handmade doll. Now the fancy handmade doll, doll uh, is used for costume crafting, so be aware of that when you do eventually reach master rank. Um, but I don't know how much it sells for to the general merchant, so I'll actually just show you that right now because I have a couple in my inventory. We go to general merchant. And we, uh, I'll sell a couple right now. Just so you guys can see, they do sell for a little bit of a pretty penny. I've only got a couple of the lower tier ones on me right now. So this is a, you know, go to general here. And we need to scroll down here to the lower rarity stuff. So like this one here. So this sells for 25,000 gold, right? Easy money. Uh, you do use a couple of these for... So here's 100,000 gold right there. Boom. There we go, right? Now, uh, you get something like uh, a million odd gold with all of them, like over a million gold with all of them. Uh, at the moment, not being a master, it's more like 600,000 gold or something. However, do be aware that in order to get to master rank, you will need three of these flame peacocks. Okay, so do not sell them. Uh, hold on to three of them, sorry. You like sell them, but hold on to three of them. Okay, that's what you're going to need to do, because once you get the master rank, uh, you are going to need to submit a bunch of things. And as you can see, there's like three flame peacocks, and that's what I'm kind of waiting on right now, <laughs> is the weekly resets on that kind of stuff. Okay, so that is one method of getting gold, right? You can, you know, you're processing stuff there. We covered, uh, we already covered like uh, buying gold with gems and all that kind of stuff um repeat quest obviously however of course i recommend what i recommend for uh if you're if you're after gold using repeat quests right i still recommend farming the path of growth tickets and then you can do the path of growth tickets and then come into path of training and do level 15 of this because you'll you'll have a chance at getting these bonus shards the angel mons and stuff you get these old tree branches you'll get these uh transcendence pieces and you'll get the gold all in one so it, it is you get less entries kind of but you don't you don't get less dungeon entries but you uh you spend less of the repeat sorry you spend more of the repeat request currency so these raheel orders right however i feel like you get more out of it in the long run and it's just more versatile right it's just more versatile to use this you'll also get unknown scrolls and the breath of lives okay um, oh, and just for anyone wondering, these are just your Kairos dungeon, your Essence dungeon tickets, so you don't have to worry too much about that. The Yarn Balls, I think you can sell them on the Exchange Center, but again, I just feel like this is worth it more because you want, you know, you do want XP for your monsters, you want gold, you kind of want all of this, you know, Breath of Life, etc. Versus just doing one or the other down here, especially since um, these don't seem to drop very often. It's mostly just going to be XP, and this is mostly just going to be gold. So these two here, not really worth it at all. The the pieces here, not really worth it. Uh, maybe these arena things, if you're really pushing for arena, but again, that's not going to help your account grow, grow. You know, you're only getting arena currency and whatever. Uh, but yeah, the path of growth, dungeon tickets, definitely worth it, uh, in my opinion. Uh, now let's see. There was uh, obviously the exchange center, uh, where you get like a bunch of... Healds and you sell it. I think we've actually covered pretty much all the important stuff as far as gold goes already. Uh, hey guys, just a quick interjection. Um, I did actually completely forget to mention the expedition. Uh, <laughs> you do get 50 of these entries each day, uh, 500 to 700, 800 odd gold each. Uh, you get a little bit of gold out of doing the uh, wind. Order, fire, etc. Dungeons as well. Um, but the special expedition mostly is going to give you uh, a little bit of gold, as well as uh, party dungeons in Rupture specifically. Uh, the further into the dungeons you go, the more gold you get each day. This is actually 
uh, your like provided kind of gold dungeon each day. You'll also get some other neat stuff out of it. Uh, and if you quick join for battle support, you'll get another 20,000 gold for uh, doing battle support. It's the same thing with Distorted Sky Island. Now this doesn't drop gold itself, but when you do the battle support, there's another 20,000 gold there. Uh, just a quick interjection. Uh, also, if you're doing these and you disassemble these, a little bit more gold. Uh, obviously with Foggy, you don't really get gold, but you do get the uh, other materials and stuff. But yeah, like, you know, maybe you get, maybe you get like a heroic Foggy drop and you want to disassemble that, disassemble that for gold as well. So my bad, I totally, uh, I don't know why I totally blanked on the party dungeons as an expedition. They were right there. Uh, I guess because there's just so much else to cover. Uh, anyways, on with the video. It's almost finished. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Uh, so the final one that I will wrap up is obviously do your main quests, do your side quests. That's going to get you tons of gold in the meantime, right? Uh, if you haven't finished all those, there because a lot of quests uh, will give you like will drop you like especially in the later ones. Uh, I think like spires. Was it spires? No, uh, harder trials. So there's 50,000 gold, there's 100,000 gold. And if you're doing that on all three characters, there's like, you know, 300, 900,000 on gold just right there in that one little quest chain, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, otherwise, you can also, if we go for, so for example, uh, we have to go up to the guard journal here. Yeah, you get a bunch of gold uh, from this stuff. You will get a bunch of gold from this stuff. Uh, but if we go like area dungeons, I think you get a little bit out of your area dungeons here, but it's not really uh, Significant right you so you'll get like a bunch of gems mostly from your area dungeons So make sure you do your area dungeons to get uh, bonus gems and If we come to the monster story, this is the big one. So when you get to the mimic Right the mimic monster story will actually drop you a ton of materials and a ton of gold. So right here, 300,000 gold. If we go in a little bit more, where are we? A little bit more, there's 500,000 gold right there. Uh, and obviously you're also getting the uh, Mimic and you're getting all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you, and there's uh, 1.2 million gold there. So you get like roughly, I think 2 million gold by finishing the Mimic storyline. The Mimic is just this free 2 million gold, do it once. One and done, bada bing, bada boom. There's a whole bunch of gold right there for you to use for progressing your character, all right? And uh, yeah, I think that kind of covered everything. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of what we uh, might have forgotten or missed here. But uh, I think I, I think through the process of this whole video, we have covered all aspects uh, that I was trying to go for today. Ooh, it is quite like the video has gotten quite long. Let's see. I'm just trying to think Yeah, I think I think I've covered everything here. It's just um You know There might be some other ways as well, but um, these are gonna be your core ones at the very least uh, Obviously like, you know, you can get probably get some gold out of doing your contribution here oh, Sorry your request office. So some of these rewards here are gold Right some of your guild daily rewards are gonna be gold as well, but you know, it's three per day, so it's not that big of a deal, right? Um, you can save some gold in upgrading your professions. If you were to, uh, so for example, what we did, or what I did for my um, upgrading my cooking, right? We've got a guild shop, ingredients. You can purchase uh, easy promotional materials right here in the guild shop. However, of course, that will make you suffer on making sure you can buy the LD scroll or other things that you might want or need in here. Uh, yeah, right? So just little things like that. But as far as like core currency goes, I think we've covered everything uh, that I wanted to cover. Just trying to think like, th these are the main things that I do. And as you can see, we, you know, I'm back up to 400,000 gold. I got 2,900 gems. I can list the, I can list my heals, uh once again and uh, sell those for even more gems right now if I want. And you can see that with items listed, I've got like at least, I think, let's say like roughly 70,000 Rahilds coming in once this Cobalt Mineral ends in four and a half hours and so on and so forth. And I'm, you know, I'm just gonna keep listing items that I'm not using anymore and whatnot. And you know, some things sell for more, some things sell for less, but as long as you keep your items listed up to like, you know, 20 out of 20, 
you'll be able to make some reheals, you'll be able to exchange those for gems when you want. Uh, you can also obviously buy the things you want using reheals if you have enough of them without having to use gold or um, or gems. It's just this big cycle of like gold gets you things for farming materials and resources and then you can sell those resources and then you can use the currency you get for selling those resources to buy gems and then you can use gems to buy gold, right? Or uh, refresh things that then get you gold and other upgrade materials, right? So it's just this one big kind of cycle, uh, cycle of wealth in uh, Summoner's War Chronicles. And uh, yeah, I think I've covered everything. <sighs> Hope uh, that was helpful for you guys. Again, I know it was quite long, but uh, yeah, I think... I hope I've, uh, you know, assisted in uh, getting you guys uh, richer, more currency, uh, making it so that you don't like feel like you get stuck or something. Because I know some people are really hurting for gold right now, for example. And this is just some of the things that I was doing in order to get my professions completely maxed out. Uh, I was really pushing, really pushing for uh, selling things on the exchange and exchanging for gold. And I did buy uh, gold a couple more times using gems past the double uh, gem cost just so because I, I thought I was going to get master server first. So we all know right now that that's not going to happen for at least three weeks. Is like, I'm not going to get master rank for at least three weeks. So someone else is probably going to take it. Um, I'm totally not still hung up on that, all right? No, <laughs> but anyways, I'll cut the video there. Uh, hope, like I said, hopefully that's helpful. And uh, yeah. Just enjoy your newfound wealth, uh, and uh, yeah, peace out, guys. <laughs>